Now, in all this, as we talk about differential leveling, we have to understand that uh, we know that the Earth is not uh, not flat. We don't. Um, yeah, it's just it's just that it's not flat. The the cur the Earth is curved. So you have to take an account when you're leveling what is actually going on. So the first thing we have here is we have a level line. Remember what a level line is? It's a line and a level surface. So along that red line, that's all one established elevation of 100 feet. Just, just assumed elevation here, okay? Now what we have is our um, elevation of our instrument, again, where that uh, level is. But now we have a horizontal line, our sight line. We look and see things as to where we are at. You know, we assume that, no, we, we want to deal in planes. We want to deal in close proximity, so we deal with everything in a plane. But when we see something, we see and we follow the sight line. We don't just go along a level line. Our eyes don't know how to do that. We follow what our horizontal sight line is. All right, so now let's tell you that uh, from my instrument over to the place I'm trying to level, that I've got a, uh, to our foresight over here, I want to go three miles along that level line. So if I stick my level rod out there, and again, this is all due to the effects of curvature, what we're going to do is we get an actual foresight, an actual rod reading of 6.5 feet. <clears throat> so what that tells me is Remember, I told you a foresight, you subtract that measurement to be able to get down to your uh, to the elevation of the point you're talking about. So if our instrument was leveled at 100 feet, I subtract off my rod reading, I end up then with an apparent elevation of 93.50 feet. Look where the elevation puts me. Below the point, not, uh, not exactly what we're looking at. Well, right there, that's our, that's our desired foresight rod reading. And that's what we're trying to get to. But we can't because that's not what our eyes do. We don't see that. And so, so in reality, we have a, you know, an actual elevation of 100 minus 0.5 of 99.50 feet. If this was all in, in you know, realistic uh, uh, time here. So, uh, so the question is, how are we going to fix that? Well, it's obvious then, if I had an elevation calculated at 9350, I need to make some sort of correction to get back up to 9950. Well, that's a difference then. I'm correcting then my apparent elevation by a positive 6 feet to get up to the proper elevation. So that's how you fix it. That's how we correct for this. And by doing so, I've got formulas here for us that we can use. So the curvature and what the, the C of F and the C of M is stands for the uh, correction in feet or in meters. So you have two equations you can use to do it in feet. One uses uh, miles, the other one uses um, F, which is thousands of feet. So make sure you understand the units. Now if you're going to be doing this in meters, K then is in kilometers. So if I take that equation, and since I'm doing everything in feet right now, just to show you here that if I use the, both of them are in feet, one's using miles, and the other one is using thousands of feet. So if you compute both, you both end up then with a correction now of a plus 6 feet. Now refraction, that's something else we have to take into account. Refraction, it makes objects appear higher than they really are. So if you look at, uh, look at the star right here, here's the light ray coming in. If you know, as so the light rays come in, it actually bends toward the Earth due to refraction. So what happens is, and now when you get to this point right here, because of the light, we look at what this angle is right here. And in reality, that vector, you know, as it continues to come into the Earth, the vector gets up to here. So our apparent, we have it like what we consider to be a, an apparent vertical angle where it is, where we'd assume then that the star is really over here, when in reality it's over here due to the refraction of the light. Um, you can also see this, that just at the point when the sun gets below the horizon, we still see the sun above the horizon. And that's again due to refraction. So now let's see what happens over here. If we are leveling again and we have to correct for this. So we have our benchmark that we're trying to do. Okay, distance of three miles again, what we're talking about. Elevation of the instrument again at 100. And we're gonna say here's our horizontal line. But now this is your true sight line. Because as you look out there, the, the, that sight line is actually refracting towards the earth a little bit. We don't follow the horizontal line like we like to. 
that's a horizontal line that allows us to be able to establish elevations from one point to another. So what we have to do is make corrections for this. So again, if you look at this, what are we actually reading? Our actual rod reading is three feet right there. Yeah, but if we, and so that gives us now an apparent elevation of 97 feet. It puts it above of where the actual elevation really is. Okay, here's our desired rod reading along a horizontal line of 3.84 feet, which then gives you an actual elevation, or would give you an actual elevation of 96.16 feet. So now what kind of correction do we need to do? You see that, uh, that we're telling us that we have a higher elevation of really what it needs to be, so we have to make a correction. In this instance, due to refraction, we make a correction of a minus 0.84 feet. So again, I've got equations for you. Uh, and R of F and R of M then stand for the correction for refraction. F stands for feet. Your answer is going to be in feet and M for meters. And again, M, F, and K is going to be in miles, thousands of feet, and kilometers. So if I do the same example and go through the calculations, whether I'm using miles or using thousands of feet, again, I went three miles, it shows me then my answer comes out at 0 0.84 on both of them. Now remember what I wrote up here? I told you the correction is a minus 0 0.84, and why? Because we said that due to refraction, you calculate things to be apparently higher than what they really are. So in this, you just have an equation that gives you the uh, absolute value amount. And what we need to do is take that and then apply the proper correction. So the difference between curvature and refraction. One, curvature. Rod reads higher than we should, and so it calculates our point of interest way too low. It makes objects appear lower than they really are. And so we have then a positive correction. And this is every time. Refraction, the rod reads lower than we should, so we calculate that our, our point of interest is too high, um, which makes objects then appear higher than they really are. And then we also have then a negative correction to be able to fix that. So if you take both into account, we end up now with new equations here. <clears throat> if you take that the curvature was a positive and then refraction was a negative to, to make it an overall correction now to get to this point right here, what we're trying to correct for now, here's your equations. So again, they're very similar. Similar is what we're doing. Again, M, F, and K. Keep uh, Make sure you know that M is in miles, F is in thousands of feet, and K is in kilometers. So again, that all happens and is due because of the, the topic of differential leveling by doing this. Always remember that this is a horizontal line. This is what we're trying to do. This is how you can be able to make uh, transfer elevation from one location, benchmark here, all the way over here to another location. It's all done by, uh, by setting it up this way. And the elevations then, of course, come off of what, uh, whatever datum is established. We use automatic levels. Um, you think, well, how are we going to make sure and always understand and know that uh, we're, we're shooting along a level line? Um, or not a level line, excuse me, we're shooting along a, a, in a horizontal plane, creating a horizontal line is what we're looking for. Well, in each of these automatic levels, we have what's called a compensator. A compensator just sits in the middle, and so what it does is make sure that anything, any, um, anything that we're seeing through uh, however your telescope is, is, uh, is tilted up or down a little bit, what it does is that compensator establishes that you're going to come out of there at the right, uh, the right direction, you know, wherever, uh, wherever it's going to be, to make sure it's in a horizontal, uh, horizontal plane, I meaning that you're going to be looking along that horizontal line. And so this is what allows us then to be able to make sure we set up the instrument properly, level it, but then for our errors and anything else, the compensator then establishes and fixes for that to make sure that we truly are looking along a, uh, you know, that horizontal line to be able to transfer those elevations from one, one thing to another.